All right, so it's 602, so we will go ahead and get started. So thank you all for joining us um, on this Highlander uh, Welcome event. Um, thank you to our, all our participants for joining. Um, normally, this would be a, a chance for us to, to meet in person and to welcome um, our recent graduates to the, the alumni family. Unfortunately, as you all can see, um, I, uh, this is not quite how we typically would like to welcome folks to the alumni family, um, but we are really thankful for our Inland Empire Network for being able to be flexible and to still provide this opportunity in a virtual format. Um, and so we really tasked our, cha our chapters with thinking of a, a question or a, a topic to be able to discuss um, virtually with all of our alum and even students. Um, and we're excited for the Inland Empire Network to be um, talking today about volunteering to build your resume. Um, again, these are typically held um, in person by um, the different networks that we have. And so um, we really encourage all of our, our graduating seniors to, to join the Alumni Association. There's a lot of different perks that come with that as, as well as a lot of different opportunities that um, you have the opportunity to be a part of. And so we've got a number of different regional networks as well as identity-based networks. Um, and the Inland Empire is just one of those. And so we are really excited to have with us the um, incoming president of the Inland Empire Network, Sam, um, who will give some brief remarks. Hi, I was worried there for a second. I was like, I can't unmute myself. What's gonna happen? <laughs> so thank you. Um, well, hi, uh, for those that don't know me, my name is Samantha Gervais Morrison, and I graduated in 2000. 2005 with my BS in Sociology and Administrative Studies. So as the Inland Empire Network's incoming president, it is my honor to say welcome to everybody. We're delighted to have you among us tonight. For the recent graduates, congratulations on your achievements. For all attendees, I appreciate you taking the time to join us tonight. We know it's not always easy to make the time, but it is worth it to connect with your fellow Highlanders. I'm looking forward to learning from tonight's panel panelists on how they've used volunteer efforts to build their resume. So if you have an interest in participating in future events or perhaps are inspired to serve on the board with myself and our other fellow board members you meet tonight, please do reach out to us. Our contact information will be displayed on the slide at the end of tonight's event. So thank you. Thank you so much, Sam, for, for joining us and we're excited to have you Coming in as our incoming president, I'm excited to work with you and see all that the Inland Empire Network is able to do. Um, so without further ado, we'll kind of jump into to the session. And so just to let you all know, we have some predetermined questions um, that we will be, be going through um, to start the conversation. Um, and we also offer or open the opportunity for all of you to, to ask questions as well. Um, there will be a chat box at the bottom of Zoom if you're not familiar with it. Um, you can submit any questions that you have throughout the session there. And from those, we will work through and try to answer all of your questions throughout. Um, and so, like I said, just use the chat feature to submit all those questions. I also realized I did not introduce myself. Um, and so my name is Brock Cavan. I serve as the Director of Young Alumni Engagement at the UCR Alumni Association. And I'm excited to be here with you. Um, the exciting thing about this virtual version is we're able to welcome a lot more folks beyond just the recent graduates in the Inland Empire. So we're not restricted by geography or year. We've got students, staff, a lot of folks joining us today. And so we're excited to have you all here. Um, we also are recording this session. So if you know someone that you think would really benefit from this, um, or you really want to be able to watch it later or share some specific stuff you hear, um, it will be recorded and shared with you after the fact. And so um, you'll be able to um, access it at some of the different resources and links we will share with you later on in the call. So I really want to um, start off by thanking our panelists um, for joining us today and being able to provide us uh, some, some great um, expertise in, in the realm of, of volunteering. And so I open it up to our panelists now to, to introduce themselves, starting off with you know, their name, year that they graduated, and what they're doing now in their careers. And so Austin, if you want to start us off. Brock, thank you for, for taking the time and, and leading this panel today. Uh, panelists, fellow volunteers, and Inland Empire board members, thank you for, for what you do for ECR. Uh, my name is Austin Quick. I graduated from UC Riverside in 2015 with a BA 
in sociology in 2017 with my master's in education. Um, I was a former men's basketball player uh, who right after graduating started working as an academic counselor for student athletes and then made my way across campus to the development offices where I worked in university advancement uh, for three years. And now my official title is the regional director of development for the mountain states. So my role is uh, partly alumni engagement, partly uh, fundraising, um, but focusing really on the states in the mountain region. And that's to find Arizona over to Texas, up to Idaho, Montana. Um, we have over 110,000 living alumni and so many opportunities to get involved and support current students. Um, so it's a, it's a pleasure to be on the panel. I look forward to answering questions and just a, a real privilege to be able to work with this Inland Empire group. Perfect. Thank you so much, Austin. Alex, would you like to introduce yourself next? Yes, of course. Um, can you hear me? I think I went through the unmuting process. Yep. Uh, so uh, my name is Alex Cortez. I'm the uh, outgoing president of the Inland Empire Network. Uh, this is my second tour of duty in that capacity. Um, and it's a real pleasure to be talking to you today, uh, hearing from all these new uh, recent grads and another Highlanders we haven't met yet. Um, I graduated from UCR with a bachelor's degree in biology in 2002 and a minor in psychology. Um, then returned a couple of years later for, to pursue my graduate degree where I got a master's in uh, ecology, evolution, and organism biology. Um, I am now a academic coordinator and lecturer with the Botany and Plant Sciences Department at UC Riverside. Uh, so I, I now work as a science educator. Um, my, I guess the, uh, everything that I did as an undergrad leading up to this point I uh, started with those volunteer opportunities uh, during uh, uh, science engagement and science outreach to the community. So that paved the way to the position that I'm at now where I, I'm, I'm a faculty member. So real uh, pleasure to be here. I'm glad to be joined by uh, the board, uh, our Inland Empire Network board and uh, our great staff and look forward to hearing from your questions. Perfect. Thanks, Alex. And I've heard lots of Alex and know that he has lots of experience to share with us. I'm excited to, to hear a lot more from him in a, in a few. Clarissa, would you like to introduce yourself next? Of course. Hi, everyone. I'm so excited to be here. So thank you so much for inviting me. Um, so my name is Clarissa Morales. I graduated UCR back in 2012 with a bachelor's in media and cultural studies. So since then, I have been working as a nonprofit professional, specifically in special event fundraising. So for the first five years of my career, I was a development director for the American Lung Association, and I am now currently a community development manager for the American Cancer Society. So I'm really excited to be able to answer any questions you have about volunteer opportunities, because trust me, there's a lot out there, and it really does help build your resume. Perfect. Thanks, Florissa. It looks like you're in a music studio there. <laughs> All right. And then, uh, Macy, would you like to introduce yourself next? Good evening, everyone. My name is Macy Ring. I'm a 2005 UCR alum. I graduated with a Bachelor of Science in Anthropology, and I went on to the University of Hawaii in Manoa to receive my Master's of Arts in Education. And about six years ago, I returned to, back to the UC Riverside campus to become the Education Abroad Coordinator. And I'm very happy to be invited to be part of this panel and I look forward to answering your questions. Perfect, thanks Macy. And then we were supposed to have one other panelist, Andrea, who um, is a current student and the incoming president for the Student Alumni Association. Unfortunately, she's unable to join us, um, and so we will be talking a bit later about ways to get involved with the Student Alumni Association, but I just want to point out that um, this current student that was supposed to join us will not be here. So without further ado, we can jump into um, our questions that we have. Again, reminder, throughout the session, submit your questions on the chat feature, and we will work to get through those throughout the session. But first off, I want to work through um, our first question of asking our, our, volu our um, volunteer panelists, um, 
tell us why you volunteer. What do you um, really love about volunteering? And what are some of those most meaningful parts of, of volunteering to you? Um, Austin, would you like to, to kick us off with that one? Of course. Um, remind me of the question again. Can you repeat that? What do I like most about volunteering? Yeah, why do you volunteer and what's the kind of most meaningful part of it to you? Um, just thinking about it, there are several reasons that, that people can volunteer. Um, whether it's because you care about a, a program and you just want to be involved or it's something that you're interested in learning more about. Um, after hearing Alex introduce himself and reflecting on his volunteering opportunities that led to his, his career, um, I started thinking that was, I was in the exact same boat. Um, there was an opportunity in the academic center to be just a volunteer while I was getting my master's. And I thought, you know, it's, it's not a direction that I had any initial intention about going, but it was a great opportunity to, to build my resume and, and gain some tangible skills. Um, and I think the more you invest in an opportunity personally, uh, the more you'll get out of it, just like anything that you do. Um, if you're half in, half out, you may reap those results, but really volunteering is, is, is so much more that you can provide uh, with your time. Um, so I, I enjoy volunteering, um, not necessarily just to build my network, but I actually build my network through volunteering. It was, it was awesome that it would work that way. Um, so many opportunities to just, Take, take a leap of faith, be courageous, um, introduce yourself to people you don't know. And it's really awesome to see the value that everybody can bring together to a network and just how, how important that is right now. Perfect. Thanks, Austin. Alex, would you like to, to go next and tell us a bit more about you know, what you enjoy most about volunteering? Uh, well, it's, it's uh, actually kind of a selfish reason. Uh, <laughs> and that is that I, I truly enjoy it. Uh, it gives me a way of uh, meeting new people and really geeking out about the things that I'm really passionate about. And uh, one thing for me has always been science and, and sort of this, uh, and its interplay with education. So uh, through that, I've been engaged in a lot of uh, volunteer opportunities that then kind of grew into being an advocate for just the university in general. So the, the, the university as a whole, so not just the research enterprise of the university with the whole uh, system. So I think everything stems from just being able to talk about something you're you're proud about and, and doing so um, when there is no direct um, benefit to you, benefit, monetary benefit. It, it feels really good. I, don't, I, don't, I feel really free to operate in that realm. Yeah. Thanks for sharing. And I think a lot of us I feel like probably feel the same way and really feel like it is a selfish piece of it because you feel really good afterwards and feel like you were able to make make a difference. So I totally, totally get that. Uh, Macy, would you like to, to share your thoughts? Sure, thanks Brock. I would echo everything that Austin and Alex shared. Uh, the network built and the community building, the professional development that comes from volunteering. I could honestly say as a student before, I decided to continue on as an advisor, uh, student advisor. It was from just volunteering on campus and then interning on campus and building those connections that I realized I want to keep working with students. I want to pursue a master's in education. I want to continue to be in higher ed. And I think the, the seeds started with volunteering and, and talking with people and discovering what you're passionate about. And for me, yes, it's, it can be looked at as a selfish thing. Uh, volunteering as a high impact practice is, there's a lot of studies that support um, volunteering that it helps you to build uh, your character and you want to keep giving back in other ways, whether it's uh, volunteering, interning, researching, or learning abroad or whatever it is you want to engage outside of the classroom as much as you can. So, so that's, that's all I have to say about that. Yeah, and I think what you, you mentioned is, is very valid. I think it's a great opportunity to discover those passions. I know personally, I was able to really discover 
uh, a number of my passions through different undergrad volunteer opportunities. And so it's a, a great experience to be able to, to learn what you really are excited about and uh, a much um, less risk um, environment. Clarissa, your thoughts. Um, so I actually started volunteering back in high school. And the reason for that was growing up, my family was pretty poor. So we relied on a lot of the organizations and the services that they offered in our community. So as I got older, I really wanted to try to give back to the community that had given me so much. So then when I went to college, so when I went to UCR, I actually joined Omega Zeta Chi, which is a community service-based sorority. So that way I was able to keep giving back to the community but at the same time, while I was helping, it suddenly clicked that this could become my career. It could be my career to actually give back and to fundraise and help support the community. So once I kind of figured that out, I kept volunteering and building my network and building my skills um, so that when I graduated, I was able to kind of pursue that as my actual career. So that's, that's why I love to volunteer. Thank you for sharing. And I, yeah, I think that's um, it's really great to hear everyone's different reasonings and there's definitely some overlap at the same time. It seems like everyone started at different times and with different reasonings, but at the, at the same time, um, at the end of the day, I think everyone can really agree um, on a lot of the, the um, benefits of, of volunteering. And I think that's, that's really great to hear. Um, so thinking to those different volunteer experiences you've had, um, I'd love to hear more about some of those, those skills that you have developed through volunteering that have, have helped you professionally in your roles. And I think the exciting thing to hear about this is, you know, you're all in very different roles throughout, you know, UCR, through different nonprofit organizations. And so I'd love to hear the ways that those skills have helped you professionally across the board. Um, and so, I, Alex, would you like to start us? Sure. Uh, and it, it's, it's a little ironic that in my role now that I'm an educator and I spend a lot of time teaching students and in front of the classroom, um, I used to be terrified by it. I used to, I'm a first generation immigrant from, from Mexico. So learning English was very daunting at first. And uh, I closed up uh, coming from Mexico to middle school and high school. Um, and I still like science a lot. And I used to be a very uh, social person. But if I had to uh, explain my ideas out in public, I would just shut up, like go into a shell and just climb up. Um, it wasn't until I started participating in uh, volunteer opportunities like coaching uh, peewee and teen, preteen and teen basketball in uh, my local park, uh, then volunteering as an undergrad in one of the st student organizations that I was a part of called Latinos in Science. Um, just to go into a room, we used to do science demonstrations for uh, kids in elementary school. So we would make ice cream with liquid nitrogen, uh, make hydrogen bombs with some chemicals, and then the, the students would just light up. And, and that opportunity to go in front of a classroom and to, or sometimes larger audiences, uh, to just share what I knew about science and how the, these processes work uh, helped my public speaking skills quite considerably. Perfect. Thank you for sharing. And I think, yeah, I think a lot of those skills that you don't even sometimes think that you can, can gain from, from volunteering, you're able to, like public speaking, um, things like that. Uh, Macy, your role um, with the Education Abroad Advising? Sure. I would agree with Alex that public skills are definitely refined when you're volunteering. And um, as many of us were saying earlier, networking skills as well as just overall communication and interpersonal skills are enhanced, improved uh, as you're volunteering and you're continuously working with people, as well as uh, team building skills and multitasking. Okay, thanks for sharing, Macy. Awesome, I'd love to hear a bit more from you, but especially looking at, you know, you work really closely with philanthropy um, at, at UCR, and obviously there's probably some overlap there in the way that those skills have helped you um, in the philanthropy world. Definitely. Um, but even before talking about career, I mean, volunteering taught me how to be a servant leader. Um, there are so many different roles that you can assume in, when you're volunteering. 
um, whether that's showing up on the first day, not knowing what you can do and just taking any opportunity and, and making the most of it, or it's um, assuming more of a manager leadership role. Um, there's just so many different opportunities for you to, as Macy said, kind of grow your skill set and your toolbox. Um, I can just remember an opportunity with Keep Riverside Clean and Beautiful. It's a just a local um, volunteer opportunity where we go out and, and clean certain areas of the city. And I mean, there are mass people and it's, it's amazing to see how, how one person's efforts can inspire so many more people and just change their work ethic or their habits. And that's really not even saying anything. That's just putting your, your, your effort to, to motion. And so I think that translates really well into to any career or any job. It's um, how can you assess a task at hand, um, be open and receptive to teammates, um, and just understand the people that you're working with. Um, it's interpersonal skills. And I think volunteering gives you a great opportunity to do that in, in no matter what field it is. But it's servant leadership for sure. Great. Right. Thanks, Austin. Clarissa, you work really closely in, in this um, field, and I'm sure that you have definitely seen a lot of those skills come through in the way that you work through things in your role. No, most definitely. So I agree 100% with everything that all of the panelists have said, because um, when you're volunteering, you're working with so many different people from diverse backgrounds. So it really gives you an opportunity to really learn how to engage and how to work with everyone. But I just kind of wanted to, for my part, when I was at UCR and when I was at Omega Zeta Chi, when I decided that I wanted to go into special event fundraising, some of the really good skills that I learned by getting involved in some of the committees in the sorority was event planning and fundraising specifically. So um, when I was there, we had a laser tag tournament um, raising money for Operation Safe House. So I learned all about logistics, marketing, reaching out to companies for sponsorships and it was scary <laughs> like at first but you know once you see the impact that you're making it gets easier and it gets better so i think that event had maybe like 100 people and now like seven years later i'm managing events with 2,000 people so we raised like a thousand dollars there and now we're raising 100 200 thousand dollars and i wouldn't be where i am if i hadn't started at ucr and in those small little committees that you probably wouldn't think would get you too far, but they really do. So if I can give that information to you, I'm glad. Perfect, thank you for, for sharing, Clarissa. And I think that, yeah, that's a good point that, you know, student organizations, different things like that that you can get involved with during undergrad, and, you know, if you're still a student, you're able to get so much experience in those roles that ultimately directly correlate to a lot of what you are able to be doing in, in your professional roles. And I think that's a great, kind of transition into our next question of, how would you incorporate your volunteering into your resume? When you're looking at building your resume, starting to apply for jobs, um, thinking through the experiences that you've had um, volunteering through student organization, through different volunteer organizations, um, how would you work to incorporate that? Um, I don't know, Clarissa, you wanna just speak to that first as someone who you know works in an organization that I'm assuming really looks for that in, in resumes. Yes, yeah, so we really do. So during my time at the Lung Association and currently at the American Cancer Society, when we're looking at resumes, especially for people just starting, like entry level, trying to find their first job, where you don't really necessarily have paid experience in some of these positions, we really take a look at those volunteer opportunities that you guys engaged in. So for me specifically, when I graduated, I only worked at dining. That was really like my only job. So my resume only had <laughs> volunteer opportunities. So it's really kind of looking at what you did during your time in those committees and those groups. So for me, it would be like, okay, so I have experience with marketing and event planning and social media. So kind of like looking at those and seeing how you can build your resume. And we really, really just love the fact that you're out there and you're volunteering and you're keeping your resume updated because we know how hard it is to find a job. Back in 2012, it was really hard to find a job. It's really hard right now <laughs> to find a job. So if there are opportunities where you can just keep volunteering and keeping your resume up to date, it's really, really helpful. So that's my advice is just to really break down what you've done before 
and kind of incorporate it into the position that you're looking for and looking to get into. Perfect. Thank you so much for sharing, Clarissa. Alex, I know you've had lots of uh, volunteer experience, especially even after graduating. So I'd love to hear more about how you've been able to translate that into you know, your resume, but specifically also, how do you continue to add it to your resume even after you're not a recent graduate? Sure. Well, I'll start back from my first graduation, which was in, uh, right after uh, undergrad. And at the time, uh, most of the employment that I've had, my employment history was, was tutoring but it did also leverage the science communication piece from, from the outreach to teamwork. Uh, I was also, uh, during that time, uh, the public relations uh, person for, for a group. So uh, being able to highlight or organization to the point that you know, we were, received uh, several awards that year uh, was something that I would also uh, work into uh, any resume that I had um, because I could promote the organization. Um, Another volunteer opportunity that I had as an undergrad was to work in the research lab. And that's what I was able to leverage to get my first job out of college. And that was uh, uh, to work as a lab technician at uh, Loma Linda Veterans Hospital. So those skills of having been able to design experiments, to have worked with model organisms, uh, those are things that I was directly able to take from my volunteer experience uh, to get that first job. Um, fast forward uh, to grad school, uh, continued along the same, same uh, lines with doing more, more work in the lab. Uh, but I was also um, working or really involved in student government. Uh, I served two terms as uh, uh, president of the Grad Student Association, where I really under learned how to just, uh, the university works and sat on many committees. So I, I was able to uh, speak better or just uh, more holistically about um, how institutions run. Uh, I was also, this was my first uh, exposure, direct exposure to the Alumni Association. Uh, through that opportunity, I was uh, an ex-officio board member in the Alumni Board. And uh, through that, I, I got my first uh, significant ex exposure and experience with advocacy, so legislative advocacy on behalf of the university. I had done some uh, as a student through UCSA, um, but it was really the, that experience through the alumni that really got me hooked and, and brought me back uh, and kept me really engaged with the alumni association. Um, I graduated at a terrible time. 2009 was the start of a recession uh, and nobody was hiring. Uh, I couldn't really, find positions where I could use the education too much or, or the science strictly. And the first job opportunity I had uh, was a result of that advocacy experience. Um, our vice chancellor uh, uh, put us in contact, uh, the UCR vice chancellor put us in contact with, put me in contact with the folk connections that are at UCLA. So I, I was able to work there in the contract position in their uh, government relations office. So that came from that uh, volunteerism through uh, the advocacy committee, um, which I've continued to stay probably the longest, longest standing uh, group or association that I've been working with over the years. Um, after that opportunity, uh, the, the, there was a position that opened uh, at UC Riverside where uh, it was a lab uh, management position. Uh, not something that I was necessarily inclined towards, but I liked what the program was doing because it had a, uh, the capacity to do science outreach and, 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 and do more cool things with education. Uh, so once I got a foothold and, and, and started working in that group, uh, I was able to um, be involved and also start running uh, the program's outreach initiatives. So Saturday sessions uh, for, un for high school students, middle school, middle school students that would come to uh, just work in the lab for uh, half a day or so. Um, that, uh, even though I had the degrees, I had the experience on my resume and the coursework, 
those interactions with those those volunteer students is what convinced my current employee employers to offer me the position as a faculty member. So I can't dismiss how important it is to to have been involved in in these volunteer opportunities because often you find yourself volunteering in things that you're really passionate about and just uh, you you're really not doing it for necessarily for for any money unless you're fundraising right but um uh so i wouldn't be where i'm at now if i if i hadn't done all these volunteer uh opportunities and they all kind of played a different role at different points in my life perfect thank you for sharing alex and i think a lot of folks on the call may um really feel what you were talking about you know graduating potentially right now mm -hmm. um, i'm sure that's a very a very um surreal feeling um and probably similar to what it felt like um graduating back in the in the recession um with so much uncertainty and so i think you know using every little thing you can, can like you said every launch opportunity to highlight the skills and experiences you have i think is really important um, especially now more than ever and so i think that's really relatable for a lot of folks right now Macy, would you like to share some, some thoughts of um, ways that folks can use their volunteer experience on resumes or, or in interviews or, or whatnot? Yes, definitely. I think many of the panelists have uh, alluded to the fact that it's going to be very difficult to look for work. And, and so in the meantime, looking at volunteer opportunities as opportunities to, uh, to get experience while you keep searching for work um, employers want to see that you've been active if you're not volunteering you're taking classes you're you're just keeping yourself busy you're keeping your skills up up to date and current um, i would say for for many of us uh, i'm echoing the same thing where i'm only in my position because of things that i did as a student at ucr that I still to this day have listed on my resume and those experiences got me my role as an education abroad coordinator now and I've been doing it for six years as I said and it's the longest job I've ever had <laughs> but uh, it's it's all the things that you're doing outside of the classroom that employers want to see and and as recent graduates what are you doing in between work volunteering etc is is really going to help you to like i said stay current and relevant perfect i think that's that's great advice macy austin your thoughts yeah i agree with with all the panelists and real briefly i would just make this point is um find a need and fill a need um, there are so many needs out there from an employer's perspective that if you can volunteer your time, address any issues that that company or that employer is, is needing at that moment, and it's at no cost to them, what kind of impression is that gonna make on, on them when they think of you or when they see your application? Um, just so many ways to leave a lasting impression. Um, and volunteering is really the first step of getting your foot in the door. So I would just say, um, I, I've kept that in my mind. Um, in every new position is where can I find a need and where can I fill it? And it really leaves an impression. Perfect. Thanks, Austin. And I um, completely agree with everyone. My very first role outside of undergrad was with the organization, a student organization that I was a part of and then volunteered with. And um, it really helps get your name out there and get to those experiences. And so I think that um, being able to really utilize that on your LinkedIn page, on your resume, is, is really helpful. For, um, we've talked a lot about kind of how times are a little different right now, and it may look different when you're entering the job search. And so um, I'd love to hear some thoughts from you all about ways that folks can continue to volunteer um, while COVID-19 is happening. What are some ways that people are able to continue to, to get this experience while having to social distance or, or even stay home? Um, I know that we are hosting our Highlander Week of Service um, in August in, in place of the Highlander Day of Service that typically happens in April. And so I know this is a great opportunity for Highlanders to be able to, to volunteer um, in ways that they're able to either do so virtually or, or independently. 
Um, and so that's a great opportunity for folks to be able to, to join us and, and volunteering and giving back to your local communities. Um, but that's one way, but I'd love to hear more from some of the other panelists about um, your thoughts on being able to continue to, to get this experience in a, in a very virtual world that we're in right now. Um, I don't know if anyone has any thoughts right away, you can go ahead and, and speak up. Yeah, I'll, I'll start off, Brock. Um, okay. Uh, taking a strategic approach as well. Um, if you're in a position right now where um, not quite sure what the next step is, or you're really looking for opportunities in a certain direction or down a certain path, um, I would just challenge you to think strategically. And if you can work your way backwards. Um, I always thought I wanted to be an athletic director one day. And so I started thinking what would be some of the necessary qualities or skill sets that an athletic director would have to have on their resume, right? Um, so if I, if I were to go back or if I were to be in that position right now, I would try to grow my network, try to introduce myself to as many athletic directors who are already in that position. Um, again, there, there are people that have already proven success and there's no need to reinvent the wheel. Um, that's where a network is so uh, prevalent and powerful. Um, so I would just challenge you to work backwards if you can. Uh, if you know the end point that you want to go, um, I can kind of provide you with a framework on, on what steps to take next. Um, I don't know if I addressed the question, but that was kind of the thought I wanted to share. No, you're totally fine. And I, I appreciate for you for, for sharing that. Other, other panelists, Clarissa, especially, I know, you know, working for an organization that, that has volunteers. Um, so I don't, Clarissa, and then we'll pop over to Macy. Sounds good. So actually, that's exactly what I was going to mention. So like you said, it's very unique times, but especially in the nonprofit world, we can't have our physical events anymore for fundraising, but that hasn't stopped us. So we are, for most of our events, we're going virtual. So I actually had my first virtual Relay for Life on Saturday. And I just want to share that we are looking for as much help as we can get, um, especially because our committees are still going strong and we're just trying to learn new ways to manage this virtual world. So if that's something that people are interested, maybe in social media or marketing or trying to find fun activities to do in the virtual events, things like that, we are looking for so much help. So my suggestion and my advice would just, if there's an organization that you're passionate about, uh, if there is an area that you're passionate about, just go on their website, just give them a call, because I'm sure that they can help find a role for you, because we are in desperate need for, for volunteers even, even now. Thank you for sharing, Clarissa, and I think that's great, uh, a great resource for folks is to know that, you know, Organizations are, are really looking for volunteers right now. And so I'm sure beyond even yours, there's, there's organizations that are, are feeling that way. And so um, reach out to those folks, like you said. Macy, your thoughts. Clarissa stole the words right out of her mouth. <laughs> um, definitely, definitely. And, and as well as Austin was talking about understanding the needs of an organization, whether it's nonprofit or not, in this time, a lot of our organizations are struggling to to carry forward virtually. And so there is a huge need in regards to social media, everything happening online. And I think a lot of our recent graduates are very, very skilled in social media and online tools and just their, their digital natives as I would call them. And so their skills are, I would guess, very highly sought after. And so as Clarissa said, I think asking questions is never a bad idea. So if there's a company that you feel passionate about, email them, give them a call and see if they're hiring, if they're looking for someone and if they, if you can just send them your resume, et cetera. And the worst thing anyone can ever say is no, but at least you'll know that you tried and you put yourself out there. Yeah, I think that is completely great advice. And, and like you said, the, the worst thing that can happen is you'll get a no or you won't get a response. And so I think that's, that's great advice. Alex, your thoughts? Yeah, I also don't I want to stress to everybody, don't uh, underestimate the power you have as an individual. And especially right now in all these uh, tumultuous times, 
your kindness and generosity goes a long way. So little acts of kindness or things you do out on the street when you greet strangers as you're wearing your UCR gear, which, you know, now it's changing. People remember that. It's like, oh, you know, this person from UCR helped me out. Um, and that, not to say that, you know, you need to be documenting all of these things, but now we have, we're, we live in an era where everything, it's so easy to promote. And uh, if you decide to go out and, you know, clean the sidewalk as you go walk to the park or pick up some recycling, I mean, that's one of the little habits I do as I go walk the park. Um, uh, those little things are, you're benefiting your community. People will appreciate, appreciate it. Um, I think also, uh, sort of back to the volunteer opportunities, uh, another thing that those allow you to do is to build those networks. So you start re creating relationships with people that can then vouch for you or maybe even offer you positions or jobs that, or uh, show you to different job leads in, in the future. So um, that all starts with just a little bit of, of service. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing, Alex. Just a reminder that if you do have questions, we wanna hear from you. Submit your questions at the chat box below and we'll start getting to those in a second. Um, so submit your questions and we will, we will work through those. But first, I'd love to hear from folks about um, how do you, you've kind of spoke to this uh, a bit, but how do you find these volunteer opportunities? Um, you know, for, in some cases, there's organizations like Clarissa's that you can easily go on and find um, and, and reach out to folks. Um, but at the same time, as Alex said, you know, it doesn't, does it always have to be a, 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 a actual organization or would you feel comfortable putting a, a volunteer opportunity that you created yourself on your resume? And so I'd love to hear kind of your thoughts on, you know, where you're able to go to find them. Alex, you know, if you want to talk a bit about the Inland Empire and, and the network and, and what opportunities even there may be there. Well, uh, and to that, I, I, I give all the credit to uh, more or more recent events that we had to both Macy and, and Sam who have uh, orchestrated those, those uh, two events. We had a diaper drive last year uh, and then a street cleanup uh, event. Um, things are looking different now that with uh, these uh, safer at home practices and, and social distancing. So it might be a while before we're able to see how we can start uh, going back to those traditional events, but uh, starting small and certainly following your own passions uh, could lead to that. So uh, if somebody wants to uh, volunteer some time at a shelter, maybe create an event around that and invite other folks, you know, as, as, as many as are allowed to potentially help, um, that is a possibility. Uh, food drives, I mean, I'm sure they're going to be important. Um, so, uh, I don't know, Macy, Sam, do you want to talk about the last, the last couple of events you've we've put together? Sure. The last event was a cleanup, street cleanup behind the extension center. Um, we try to have those once every year. Um, I personally like the cleaning up the neighborhood type projects. That's personally something that I'm passionate about is keeping our communities clean and safe and, and beautiful for all to enjoy. So, and, and that's just within the UCR Alumni Association and the Empire Network. Um, but of course, if you wanted to start your own, you know, DIY cleanup project, it doesn't, like Brock was saying, it doesn't have to necessarily be attached to an organization. Um, just so that you can, you know, have something to do, to do um, in the meantime, as you're trying to, you're, you're waiting to hear back from organizations that you have left messages for, emails for, there are things that you can, you know, do in the meantime on your own if, if you'd like. Perfect. Thank you for sharing, Macy. Clarissa, do you have, have thoughts to add to, to that as someone who's worked in a number of different nonprofits? Yeah, definitely. So um, actually kind of not tied to nonprofit per se, but if there's kind of one thing, like a 
a good thing that's kind of come out of this whole situation and everything being virtual is that a lot of like chambers and a lot of volunteer groups that normally you had to pay to be a part of are now offering you the chance to join some of their meetings for free. So I would definitely kind of like maybe do some research there. Um, there's also a PIC group, which is a young professionals group that I'm in. And actually that's how I met Sam <laughs> was part of that group. And they have a lot of volunteer opportunities as well. And they have committees that you can be a part of, such as the, like the social committee and the volunteer committee and advocacy committees. So there's a lot of different ways that you can get involved. And especially now it seems that they're offering it for free, which wasn't available before. So kind of like the Fontana Chamber of Commerce. I'm not sure about the Riverside Chamber, but I just think that's a good opportunity to look into. Perfect. Thank you, Clarissa. Oh, we got some allies. Would you like to continue? Yeah, just, to just, just to add more to advocacy opportunities. I mean, it, some of you might be more uh, politically involved and want to get involved with your local elected uh, officials. So there's always opportunities there. Uh, either through uh, UCI directly, uh, I don't know if you, uh, it's in the, uh, the list of links that you know, you're going to provide, but there, there is a you can network. Uh, so it's a system-wide way of how you can, um, as an alum, as a mem affiliate of the university, advocate on behalf of the whole system. Uh, and similarly, there's stuff uh, that UCR does uh, in in context of uh, legislative advocacy and, and to both uh, federal, state, and local affected, uh, elected leaders. Uh, some of you have those connections because you're a constituent in, in those particular districts. So uh, we, we speak in UCR uh, and the alumni advocacy, um, we could use your help uh, a lot of times when we go uh, reach out to those uh, folks who write those letters, write those emails. Uh, it, those messages um, carry a lot more weight when they come from somebody from within their district, somebody that's uh, voted for them. So just a small plug there. Thanks, Macy, did you have anything to add or are you, are you good? Yes, Brock, thank you. Just real quick, um, yeah. LinkedIn, LinkedIn, if you all aren't on there, please. Uh, create an account, keep your accounts updated. More and more employers are going on these sites to scout candidates and to look at profiles and not to mention all of the networking that's happening there as well as, like we were saying earlier, if you find an organization that you're passionate about, email them, call them, reach out to them, see what they have to offer. Um, a really good site that I used to look at and every now and again still do idealist.org has a lot of volunteer opportunities perfect thanks macy and um that actually opens it up to one of our um, questions that we received um that we'll ask you all that kind of goes along that is do any of you have any recommendations um for organizations or clubs that you reckon that you recommend folks getting involved with any um different volunteer opportunities that you really have enjoyed that you would like to, to let others know about. Inland Empire Network. <laughs> the American Cancer <laughs> Society. <laughs> <laughs> Mojave Desert Land Trust. And also, I'm the staff, UCR staff advisor for the National Society of Leadership and Success. It's a UCR chapter of students who want to work on building up their leadership skills. So if any of you have any questions about that, please feel free to send me an email. Thanks, Macy. I think uh, for a lot of the recent grads, and for those of you that as you uh, start to put some distance between your graduation year, uh, reaching back to the university and, and reaching back to, to students specifically um, that might be in the same shoes you were just a year or two years ago. Um, that's also very important and it's a good way to stay involved. Yeah, I think mean, that's a great point. And we have a number of different opportunities within the Alumni Association to get involved from, you know, being advocates to emailing legislators like Alex was talking about, to um, volunteering to read scholarship applications for, for the Alumni Association, as well as serving as mentors. And so um, our student alumni association, like I kind of mentioned earlier, is a student organization within the Alumni Association. 
um, where students work to plan opportunities for students and alumni to connect. And so between different, um, serving as different panelists, just, just like here as an alum, um, to serving as a mentor for students, um, it's a great opportunity to, to give back and while at the same time staying involved with UCR. But on the flip side, as a student, being involved with Student Alumni Association is another great opportunity for you to be able to connect with different alumni and, and mentors and be able to um, be able to, to hear more about these, these great, this great advice. And so um, on, on both sides, whether it's an alumni or student, there's a lot of opportunities within the Alumni Association to, to get involved and to um, be able to give back. Austin, I don't know if you had any more thoughts um, on any of the things we've talked about. Nothing to add. Thank you, though. Yeah, no problem. All right. Well, we are um, we don't have any other questions quite yet, um, and so we do want to just ask all of our our panelists. Um, you know, what is your one um, big tip or piece of advice that you would like um, to share with our our alumni and students joining us today um, in regards to to volunteering and and looking at that job search and the way that volunteering plays a role in that. Um, so, uh, Austin, you're still on my screen, so do you want to go ahead and share your, um, your uh, tip and, and piece of uh, advice for, for folks? Of course. Um, I was thinking a lot about this one, and I think the two kind of tips that come to mind is never underestimate the power of an opportunity um, and leveraging the growing and ever so prominent UCR network. Um, you're a part of a, a large family, again, 110,000 alumni um, that have all been in your shoes at one point or another, and it, it's never been stronger. So uh, continue, if you're looking for a, a job or an opportunity or a company, um, and if you can find an alum in there, use it to your advantage, right? We're all UCR alumni, we all wanna see uh, Highlander succeed and that's really where the hashtag happened is where Highlanders helping Highlanders um, and there's nothing better than, than doing that then the other one is a little bit more of the coach in me is everyone has 24 hours in the day and that right now everything's going virtual so what you do when nobody's looking is really going to show when they start looking um, be relentless uh, don't take no for an answer and just keep pushing I know Highlanders have that grit and that's really what makes us a part of our identity. So just keep pushing and remember we're in your corner. That's, that's great. Thanks so much, Austin. Clarissa, do you want to share your piece of advice tip for folks? So I guess my advice would be when it comes to volunteering, just kind of find what you're passionate about and just run with it because there's so many amazing organizations out there that you can help and you can make a difference in your community. And also at the same time as you're doing your volunteer work, just to make sure you stay connected with the people you're building your network with. Because down the road when it is time for you to, to find a job and you start applying, they make amazing references because they're in your corner and they want to help you because you were there and you helped them and they want to see you succeed for the most part. So that would be my advice. Thank you. Macy, your parting advice for folks. Um, I would say, as I was kind of, at, I will add to what I was saying earlier, it's okay to have bridge jobs and volunteer work to fill in those gaps between your undergrad and, and employment or from job to job until you find the best one for you, except that there will be disappointments along the way, but do learn from your mistakes and that there may be jobs that may not suit you because all of that's going to continue to inform your path to the next best thing. Thanks, Macy. Alex? Um, time is precious. Um, follow your passions. Um, keep learning and always give back. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you, Alex. We actually have one more question um, that just came in. Um, for, for anyone, especially those that are working closer with the Inland Empire, chapter is, you know, what do you look for in a, in a chapter leader for folks that may be wanting to get more involved with, with the network, um, especially, you know, Alex having been part of a, a number of different um, chapters and organizations, or, or even may see Sam if you have thoughts. Um, um, but what, what do you look for in a chapter leader and what do, what do you think um, would be a good um, person to, to step into a role like that? Passion and presence. I mean, if, 
passionate about something, you're present, you're going to show up to do things. Uh, that's, that's most of the work right there. Ditto. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Well, thank you all. I would just like to thank all of our panelists one more time for, for joining us today and for providing um, such great insights. Um, I was, it was so great to hear from you and to, to learn so much. Um, I hope that a lot of our attendees were able to, to gain a lot of insight. Um, I do have um, our screen with um, some resources to share with you all. We talked about a lot of different stuff. Um, and so do know that a lot of this will be um, shared with you in uh, a follow-up email. Um, but these are some of the resources um, that we have. Um, there's plenty that we talked about, but these are just some of them. So in regards to the different networks, um, that first application is the board of directors application for the different networks that we have, both regional and identity-based networks. And so if you're interested at all in, in joining any of those, um, that's a great, a great um, link right there. Uh, you can, so that is what Alex was talking about earlier, about um, lending your voice to you know really shaping state and, and federal policies and, and helping legislation. Um, that's the link there to join um, the University of California Advocacy Network. Student Alumni Association I mentioned before, opportunities for both alumni and for students. The week of service, like I mentioned before, is going to be in August and so there's going to be a lot of different opportunities to get involved in, in volunteering there. And then the Inland Empire Network, I did throw on the Facebook page there for you to be able to connect with the, with the network if you are interested, as well as the email address that Sam mentioned earlier. If you have any questions or want to reach out at all, um, that's a great way to reach out to those folks. We also have some more events coming up if my screen will change. Um, so we have some other virtual opportunities for you all to continue learning and understanding how to continue to better yourselves as a Highlander. Um, we have a panel next week that Macy will also be on, so she'll be returning two weeks in a row, um, on creativity and sustainability. And so looking at um, how to continue, how to be sustainable in new and unique and creative ways, um, even if, you know, you don't have the education and the background in, in sustainable practices and environmental science, how can you continue to, to still be sustainable? Um, following that, we actually have the Higher UC Virtual Career Fair, um, which is going to be a virtual career fair for all University of California graduates, um, where employers will be um, available virtually uh, to join um, and to be able to have conversations with you and um, hopefully help you um, either enter the workforce or, or make that next step in your career. Um, we have another panel on civic engagement um, on the 21st, and then we will also have our um, another Highlander welcome. The, this one will be the Orange County chapter. This one will be focusing on how to utilize your social media, your LinkedIn, your Facebook or whatnot to, to find a job and to really market yourself. All these will begin at 6 p.m. Beyond that, we also have a lot of different resources for you available at alumni.ucr.edu forward slash career services. We've got um, resume uh, guides, career um, cover letter guides, lots of different resources for you if you're looking to really um, look at updating your resume or whatnot, um, as well as the links to these videos will also be um, uploaded onto the website um, in the future. And so that's a great um, website for you to join. I also um, encourage you to connect with us on LinkedIn. There is a, a UCR alumni LinkedIn group in which a lot of folks are able to connect with each other um, and make great connections within um, the different um, alumni groups that we have. And so really encourage you to utilize all that we have to offer you um, in the UCR alumni office. We're here for you and we are really excited to be able to bring to you um, these different virtual panels. So again, I wanna thank all of our panelists for joining us and spending the, the last hour with us talking and sharing your expertise. We really appreciate it. Um, and thank you all for coming and participating and um, have a great night. Thank you, Brock. Thank you, Brock and everyone. Yes, congrats to all the graduates. Thanks everyone, congratulations. Go Highlanders. Congrats. All right, ours up. Go Highlanders.